Hello again, I am Blunty, and I'm going to tell you a story about how the world's first bad game made me a lifelong gamer. See, I became a gamer at age three, or thereabouts. It's hard to be accurate looking so far back, but I had a sibling who's about three years younger than me, and my earliest video game memories don't include them, so about three years. It was the early 80s and our very lower middle class family was visiting our rather more upper middle class relatives who had just got an Atari 2600. Not for my two year old cousin, she was more interested in the trampoline at the time, so I'm guessing it was more for my uncle's amusement. In any case, I was shown it. I sat down in front of the TV and I was locked there for the next three hours or so the story goes, utterly entranced by this new concept of a video game. TV you could control. Boop, boop. And as the story is told, I would from then on always beeline right for the console on every single visit to those family members until that Christmas came and I got my own. That was a very exciting Christmas. And I used that console frequently for the next decade, long, long after it had been rendered old and out of date. Until one weekend, without my permission or knowledge, my mother sold it and my rather large pile of game carts at a garage sale, assuming that I never used it because it was so old. I never did forgive her for that. Still mad about it. But the game that started it all, the very first video game I ever played, the adventure that entranced me for hours on end, was in fact one of the world's first controversial games. A hated game, a game that these days would spin out endless amounts of hot takes in articles on YouTube and videos and Reddit posts and TikToks and whatever, a choir of screeching voices all yelling about just how bad it is and how terrible the developers are and how the publishers are just shoveling out any old garbage to make a fast buck because otherwise, you know, businesses don't really care about money that much. And of course, you'd have the contrarians yelling back at them, actually, it's pretty good. I, I would be one of those contrarians defending this terrible video game because it was Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. And back in the day, to any fan of the arcade version, or the real version, that took the world by storm in 1980, this 1982 release for the Atari 2600 was a, a personal insult. The game was, as was almost universally true back in those days, entirely developed by a single person. They did everything. In this case, that person was a man named Todd Fry, and it was in development for about four months. Four months. Four months. These days, of course, four years would be considered a short development time for a big licensed game. But there are many reasons beyond the tight schedule that were blamed for the many criticisms that the game received uh, at launch and long after launch. Starting with the fact that it was considered important to enable two-player mode, which ate up a lot of the space on the tiny ROMs the carts had. The whole thing had to be crammed into just four kilobytes of ROM space. The 8 kilobyte ROM form factor for the Atari carts wasn't yet available. That probably would have helped it out a bit. So that choice led to a bunch of compromises all on its own, not limited to using up the also very limited memory on the console itself to store player 2's status and how many lives and the points and all that sort of stuff between turns. The Atari version had significant graphical restrictions too. Gone were the dots that Pac-Man would munch on replaced with what the manual called video wafers if memory serves. The cherry became just a block, uh, as did the power pellets, just blocks in the corner instead of lovely round pellets. The maze was completely different too, and the teleport tunnels were on the top and bottom instead of the sides. That, that apparently annoyed quite a few people. Because one of the key things about being really, really good at Pac-Man was memorizing certain patterns. And people didn't like that it was a different maze with different layouts and everything, I guess. <coughs> Skill issue! <coughs> Also gone were the individualized ghosts. In the arcade version, they had different colors. They all had different names and different personalities. They behaved differently from one another too. What was it Pinky and Blinky and something or other? I can't remember the names. Very long time ago. But the Atari version only had one ghost repeated four times, an endlessly flickering pale ghost. The flicker also being a workaround for some hardware limitations to do with sprites and whatnot. Uh, and there was no flicker reduction put in, as was the case for later games, which used the same sort of little workaround, including Miss Pac-Man, by the way. And as for why there was no anti-flicker stuff built into the game, because there was code to do that, 
but it wasn't used. Uh, and if you ask why, well, there's a few different versions to that story. <laughs> also gone, though, was the iconic waka waka sound Pac-Man was so recognisable for across the din of noise in an arcade or a pub or whatever. Instead, some classic Atari 2600 bleeps. But those bleeps and the game's start chime actually became something of stock sound effects for movies and TV for many, many, many years uh, when a character you know, on the screen was playing a game. I remember quite vividly there was many scenes in various TV shows and, and movies and stuff where someone was playing a Game Boy or something not Atari and you would hear the da -da 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 and the Atari beeps and bleeps and stuff just from a stock sound library. And the game's more basic graphics were also displayed on a coloured background. Sacrilege! Absolutely not arcade accurate. Why did they do that? Well, Atari had a really weird rule at the time, only allowing space-based games to have black backgrounds. Presumably so that all their other games looked really bright and colourful, so they could show off, you know, how many colours the Atari system could do and how bright and colourful and wonderful and happy everything was on their system. I don't know, weird choice. I mean, seriously, the, the Atari version and the arcade version <laughs> only vaguely resemble one another. Uh, the, the, the arcade version I'm showing you here is just from a, a website emulation of, of the arcade version. It doesn't quite represent what the arcade was, but it's close enough to show you the difference here. Uh, but as you can see, <laughs> you can understand why people are a bit miffed when they purchased it for the Atari Twin Center. Took it home, plugged it in, flipped on the, on the switch, and that's what they were presented with instead of what they were expecting. Uh, Ms. Pac-Man, though, was a much better received port. Um, I never actually owned Ms. Pac-Man, so I have no personal insights to share about that. Feel free to chime in in the down below if you have. Pac-Man even became the pack-in game for the Atari 2600, the included game. Between that and the regular sales, it's estimated some around 8 million copies of this supposedly hated game were sold, making it the best-selling game on that system. Even when, in hindsight, some people piled it in with E.T. the Extraterrestrial, that most notorious of all failed crappy games, when it came to finding things to blame for you know, scapegoating the mid-80s video game crash on. Look how bad the Pac-Man port was, it's, it's their fault. But still, as a kid, as a wee lad, as a wee baby blunty, I knew none of that. I had no idea. I had only so much as ever seen an arcade version of Pac-Man at the pub we would, as a family, perhaps once a month or so, go to for a counter meal. Never played it. Couldn't even reach the controls. I was tiny. Those family outings for a counter meal down at the pub were also where I was very, very wrongly taught how to order a steak properly. Well done. Another thing I shall never forgive my parents for. I was in my very late teens before I unlearned that mistake and found out how good steak could be when cooked properly and not, you know, incinerated. <laughs> but all I knew was I had fun playing Pac-Man on my Atari 2600. Hours and hours and hours of fun. I was not good at it. I never got good at it, no matter how much I played. I died often, partially through a skill issue because I was so young, partially because, well, the Atari 2600 infamously mushy joystick making the already pretty unresponsive controls on the port of Pac-Man even worse. Um, even with this game footage that I've been showing you throughout this video, it's I'm running it on an emulator, of course, which I'm playing with a very responsive D-pad. You can still see me having trouble making turns and, and going back into the gaps and going back and forth. Oh, I need to go, I need to go, I need to go. There we go. That was the only thing I didn't like about the game, how bad the controls felt. But still, I loved it. And it was just the first of many, many, many Atari 2600 games, several more of which were also considered the worst versions of said games, or ports, or whatever, or at least just not arcade accurate enough, or, you know, whatever people were complaining about. You know, again, at the time, I was blissfully ignorant. I wasn't reading video game magazines or anything back then. I was just having fun. And I never stopped having fun that way. I have never stopped being a gamer ever since. I'm 45 now, about to turn 46 real soon, actually. And for every last one of those 42 years, I have played video games. It is just a thread of my life that is ever present. Since I first laid hands on the CX-40 joystick and my eyes landed on the fuzzy CRT enchanted blocks that described the flapping mouth of Pac-Man and my ears first caught the chime that I shall never ever forget. I was born as home gaming was born and I'll die a gamer too. And it is all thanks to the very worst version of the world's first global smash shit video game, Pac-Man for the Atari 2600. Silver linings, I guess.
Or, you know, ignorance is bliss. There's a moral here somewhere, is all I'm saying. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this interesting. Thank you, as always, to the patrons scrolling up above there. Let me know in the down below your very first video game memory.